Let's talk about the meds and vaccinations. First of all, that would be eye prophylaxis. We use erythromycin eye ointment as soon as possible after birth to protect against ophthalmia and neonatorum. Silver nitrate is not used anymore because it doesn't protect against chlamydia. The antibiotic eye ointment protects also against the miscellaneous bacteria in the birth canal that the baby's eye may encounter. Vitamin K. Uh, this was discussed in the last chapter, but remember that since the gastrointestinal system has no bacteria to make vitamin K initially, we give it intramuscular to prevent bleeding. Hepatitis B will also be given intramuscularly routinely in the newborn nursery. However, remember that before giving the vaccinations, consent must be obtained from the parents. IM injections in newborn nursery are given using a 25 gauge 5 8 inch needle in the vastus lateralis at a 90 degree angle. Newborn screening is mandatory. It involves pricking the heel of the newborn and filling five circles on a blotter with blood. This dries and is sent to a state lab for analysis. I have a good friend who is a pediatric endocrinologist and he says that the newborn screen is probably the best use of taxpayer money ever on any state budget. It has been instrumental in nearly eliminating certain kinds of mental retardation that were prevalent just a generation ago. Hypothyroidism and PKU are now treated immediately instead of causing severe brain damage. There are five circles on the blotter and we used to test for five diseases, mostly inborn errors of metabolism, but most states are going to even wider screens of diseases which they are allowed to select. Hypothyroidism and PKU are two disorders that are mandated to be screened in each of the 50 states in Canada. Heel sticks must be done in the correct manner, avoiding the nerves in the feet. And your book gives an excellent illustration of that. Necrotizing osteochondritis is a complication of doing the heel stick wrongly and piercing a bone and causing an infection. Circumcision. Circumcision is a matter of personal choice. It's quite common here in the Metroplex. It was less so when I was in El Paso. Uh, it's controversial and as nurses we simply give our patients information allowing them to make decisions as they see fit. It is not covered by Medicaid. We as nurses care for the male infants who undergo this before, during, and after the procedure. Many of you will have the opportunity to see a circumcision during this clinical rotation. I urge you to see as many procedures as you can, including this one, since it gives you much more knowledge and experience in caregiving. There are two main procedures used to circumcise in the newborn nursery, the Gomco or Yellen, and the Plastibel. The care afterward is different for each method, so make sure you know post-op care. Use Vaseline gauze with gom coat, smearing it generously on the inside of the diaper so that the raw area of the penis does not stick to it as it dries. There are a few physicians using the Mogad method, the Mogan method, which is an ancient method, and the care afterward is similar to that given to the infant having the gom coat procedure. Know how each assessment that is listed in Table 26.2 is done. This material is often found on the standardized tests. The care, the care paths on page 696 to 699 are also of great importance. Know the non-pharmacological methods of managing newborn pain as well.